Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sword, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. This video today is going to look at uh, activity, activity 11, basically the example problem for single comparison statements and conditional jump operations. Let's get and let's look at the problem and let's see how I would at least first convert this into C++ if I needed a better understanding of the problem before I just jumped right into assembly. So I'm basically rewriting the assembly, or the, uh, the absolute value function here. And so you say the value has its negative sign returned. So negative 4 would become a positive 4, and a positive 4 would stay a positive 4. 0 would stay 0. So you're basically just slapping the negative sign off and returning the value back. That's what the absolute value function. Notice there's nowhere in here that mentions printing of any kind. Functions, utility functions like this generally never print anything. They, re, you know, they do their job, they return back their value, and it's up to you, whoever's using that function, if you want to print it out, you can. So again, this is just an easy if check. If it's, you know, if the EAX value is less than zero, negate it, make it positive, otherwise return it no matter what. And so the main function, just basically here's your input phase, here's my calculation phase, here's my output phase, and here's cleanup. And I say, I, I'm using EAX, we're going to use the register, we're not going to use the variable inside of the program, but uh, as you can tell, we can't really do that this, you know, that same way here in C++. So just EAX is going to be a register, but we're going to treat it like a variable here. Print out, enter a value, get that value, put it into my EAX, use that as a parameter to the function, and then the return value will go back into EAX, and then print out the absolute value is print the value and print end line, then do a uh, call wait message and then return zero. So that's what we're looking at here, a very, very simple program. Might be one of the first programs you ever see if you're taking like CIS 1400 or something like that. Just a very simple function call that uses an if statement. Okay, so let's jump into assembly language and convert this. Okay, for this to work, I'm just going to go ahead and have everything set up here. I'll do the main function first, since that's the stuff we know how to do. You know, we've learned that sooner than we learned how to do functions and parameter passing, and especially if statements. That is a brand new thing to this week. So in the main, I could say I want to, I, again, don't worry about this int EAX. We're just going to treat the EAX register uh, the same as that. And I want to print out enter a value. So I need some data. I'm going to call this the prompt. I'm gonna Use a byte, a byte string, and I'm going to put enter value. I'm going to put a space after that, and I'm going to put the null terminating character. You can't, you, one of those things, if you counted this up, you'd find 15 characters in C++. The 16th is assumed. Do I have anything else? Pause. See, P-A-U-S-E, that's five letters, but there, it's a const care six. So you have to understand that C++ already does work for us that we're not even aware of. It's adding the null terminating character have to do that here. Okay, so I want to print that thing out so I can do a move into the EDX register. The offset, the address, the pointer to where this prompt string of characters is uh, in my memory. And um, by itself that won't work, but if I do a call uh, write string, that will work it out for me. So I can run my program here. I hope it works. Yep, it does. Okay, and uh, there you can see my printout. Enter a value. And so we're ready, you know, so we've already done that. C in, as we've shown in prior videos and the Irvine library, this is why I'm using EAX since it's a very simple program. I can just do call read int, and that will take whatever the user inputs, and it'll put that whatever value I type in, it'll parse it as a string into an integer and store that integer in the EAX register. So that's what I'm already doing here. Get me some input from the user and put it into the EAX register. So when I'm here, EAX register will hold the input value. So I've done the entire inputs, or, yeah, input stage here, and now I'm ready to move on. And so I'm saying I'm going to call this, and when I get to the, when I write my function, I'm going to know that my input is the EAX register and my output is the EAX register. That's what I kind of see here, input, output. And so I'm just going to play around with that. And since EAX holds the value from the input already, I don't have to do any extra work. I don't have to do any movement. I don't have to move any code or any uh, values from memory or from registers into the correct places 
to call my function. I'm already good to go. I can call absolute. And when I get when this thing finishes up and gets to where the cursor is now, the EAX register, if I do everything right in the absolute function above, will absolutely, that's a pun, not, in, not really intended, that it will absolutely hold the correct value. And so now, coming back again, just to finish up the output stage, I want to do the same kind of thing here with the result string. Oops, byte. And I want to make sure I do this right. The absolute value. Did I type that? Yep, good. Is, and there I go with that. And then I'm just going to basically copy paste in a way what I've already done. Move into the EAX register, the offset of the result pointer, call right string. Uh, yep. And since again, since EAX is holding the value, it can't, you know, nobody's gone ahead and changed that value. I can go ahead and just call write int. And write int will give me the signed value. If I do write dec, I'll never see the, because the, uh, that, that prints out as unsigned. I'll never see the correct value for negatives. And so write int, that's what I want to do. And then I want to do call uh, CRL at carriage return line. Feed. And then down here, just to finish everything up, and just since I'm on a roll, I will call wait message. And then I will do exit. Exit is basically your return zero. Exit my, you know, exit the whole program out, outright. Okay, so that handles everything that needs to go down here on the main side. And as long as I do everything properly on, in the function, then we're good to go. So let's just, we'll just see what happens here, right? So right now, here I did everything. Looks like I have an error. Uh-oh. I, I thought I was perfect. Let's see. Absolute. Oh, um, nope. Oh, I obviously didn't create that function yet. So what I will do to create the function is make sure you put your every function, every all of your code in the code section. Uh, I just got to make sure I do everything right here. I'm just say absolute rock. And just to put a placeholder, I'll put a ret, not an exit. I will put a ret and an NP here. So just coming back, exit quits, quits the entire program. That's It halts your program and says, I'm done, I'm out. And then it just kicks out and says, tells the operating system it's done. A ret just kicks me out of the, you know, of the function or the procedure that I'm currently in. That's a big difference. If you're only in the main, yeah, may, maybe it doesn't make much difference to you. But anywhere else, in any other programming language, you never want to exit. You always want to return. So let me run this now that, yep, now that I have everything going, enter a value. And you would never know any better if I just print, okay, but if I put, a, if I put all positive numbers in, you would never know that this thing is wrong. But if I put in some, anything negative, you could tell that this thing is not working because that is obviously supposed to be a positive too. Okay, so now we need to fill in the gaps here and let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to solve this problem two separate ways. Uh, one is the more literal way, the way the code is written here. Uh, you know, I'm just going to kind of just kind of make it work that way, and then I'm going to basically, you'll see, flip the logic around to make everything a bit simpler. So I need to have an if statement. So there needs to be some kind of comparison that goes on, and that's all. You know, and a comparison, remember, is a non a non destructive subtraction, and the whole purpose of the subtraction is to change all the, uh, the the flags that are going on on the CPU so that when I do my comparison in the next line of code that the flags hold the correct values and then the jump will, will you know will actually do its job properly based off the result of this subtraction and I have here I'm gonna compare EAX to zero and so when I see an if statement like this what I see is I, I basically see a compare left side right side and then the next line holds basically what, have I, you know, what is the jump going to be. And in this case, just to be, keep it literal, this is going to be jump if less than. Oops, jump if less than. And then some label. I'll call it do it. And then down here somewhere you'll have your label do it. And then you will just negate the EAX register. Correct, right? I mean, that's what we're, what's, that's what we're going for is to take, the, you know, if compare this and if it's less than then negate it and return it and at this point now well, what would this do for us right let's just kind of talk it out now I say my negative three becomes a positive three but depending on where you're looking at here you go well okay now it works I'm done and I go well how about positive three 
positive three returns a negative three. Now you're right back where you were, and now but reversed, right? And the problem is if this ends up being false, if I do not jump because it's less than, then I fall through. And what, where do I go when I fall through? I fall right through to the same code as I do if I was jumping. And so I would negate. And you can see, it, basically, this isn't even needed. None of this is needed because all you're going to do is you're going to negate whatever value is every time. So how about this? I do an unconditional jump to don't do it. And then I come down here. I've got to make sure I put things in the right place. Don't do it. And, I just, and, that, and then what was that? What will that do, right? I'll compare EAX to zero. If it's less than, I'll go to do it, which negates. That's what I want to happen. Turn my negative, you know, turn my less than zero number positive, and then return because the EAX register now holds the, the correct value to print the correct value out. And if, <clears throat> excuse me. And if this isn't true, and so what's the opposite of less than is greater than or equal to. So if the value is greater than, if EAX is greater than or equal to zero, meaning a positive number, it'll jump to don't do it, and it'll return not doing anything. So now, let's say this is the first way of doing things. You have, I'll put a negative 2 in, and it comes back positive 2. And now I can go ahead and do positive 2, and it comes back positive 2. So at this point, you have a working solution, but it can be fixed up a little bit here. Because uh, sometimes with like an if statement, as you, if, depending on how, you know, how much you ever use this stuff, which is most likely very little out in the real world, just to be honest, but if things go horribly, horribly wrong, you need to know what's going on under the hood, right? So, um, so basically, in high-level languages, we think out code uh, like the way you kind of see it here. If a positive thing happens, do whatever I'm going to do in that, you know, do the code block in that positive case. But kind of using the, you know, the 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 idea of. Uh, um, the opposite here, I'm saying that in C++ I say, well, what do I have to do to do this? The other way around of thinking of this is, what do I have to do to do nothing? And so this is, by reversing this, you'll see that we'll actually lose one of these, we'll lose a line of code, and we will, we'll lose one of the jumps, and we'll lose one of the labels in the process. So simpler code. So again, we're saying like, okay, if this is true, I want to do this. Well, what if, you know, basically, what do I want to do if the thing is false? And what I want to do if this is false is nothing. So let's start over. Let me start with this comparison. And say, okay, I'm comparing EAX to zero. And now, what if I want it, What happens if I jump if uh, greater than or equal? That is, again, the opposite of less than. I say, if, the, if it's not less than, it's got to be greater than or equal to. And I'll say, don't do it. Just like I did before, I'll put this down here. Don't do it. And now I return back. But here, instead of a jump and I do other code, this is where I can just say negate EAX. And so you can see here, I've eliminated one of the jumps, I've eliminated one of the labels, and we get, we get ourselves to the same endpoint. Because here, in, instead, you know, and I say, okay, compare EAX to zero, so I am, if, but what's the, you know, the opposite of less than is greater than or equal to, just like we had down earlier below, we say, okay, now if it's greater than or equal to, don't do anything. Because that, again, that's a positive value. I return back, the EAX register is holding a correct value. But if this falls through, GGE, don't do it. If this is less than, that's the opposite again. That's the, you know, the, you know, the opposite of greater than or equal is less than. Then I fall through, and then I do want to negate, and then I still want to go through this label, because you know, the label doesn't do anything for us, and it returns back. So we get to the same thing, but we saved ourselves a couple lines in our code. So positive three, positive three, and of course, your negative seven comes back positive seven. And we have the complete solution. Let's see, there we go. That's everything that there is to do for this uh, activity. So as always, if you have any questions or concerns about what was going on here, please send them to me, either down below in the comment section or at swordb at c. Thanks for sticking it out with me, watching this video, and I'll see you next time.